So my name is Monica Davis, and I am the Director of Virtual Learning and Instructional Technology in the DeKalb County School District. Um, the DeKalb County School District is it's an urban school district, and it's located in the United States in the state of Georgia, near the city of Atlanta, Georgia. And if you're familiar with the 1996 Olympics, that is where we hosted, we hosted the 1996 Olympics, so it's in that area. Um, we have approximately 103,000 students and 6,400 teachers. 71% of our students are economically disadvantaged, um, which means access to technology is challenging. 27% of our students are English language learners, which means that their primary language is not English. Um, and they represent over 180 countries in our school district and speak over 150 languages and dialects. So for our districts, these facts are significant because many of the students do not have optimal access to technology beyond school hours. So it's imperative that the district is prepared to provide that learning experience for our students. Okay, next slide. Okay. <laughs> so with that being said, in our district, we have a lot of technology stuff. We have devices, we have a digital curriculum strategy um, where we are, we're addressing teaching learning. Um, we have digital content, we have assessments, we have student portals, we have SIS integrations, SIS meaning student information system, and we have cloud-based productivity tools, oh my. So we have lots of stuff in our school district, but we still find ourselves um, seeing that there is a low use of technology throughout the district that supported critical thinking and problem solving, as well as collaboration. And we see use of technology to look, you know, up information and, you know, find, you know, if you want to write a paper to find data and facts and, and things of that nature, or what we call, some people say drill and skill, I say drill and kill, because it's just a lot of just inundating the student, you know, with the same repetitive, um, repetitive activities, but when we think of higher order thinking and moving that child and that student above to use those critical thinking skills and that problem solving that everyone, regardless of where you are on this globe, we're all facing the same problem. Um, we're not seeing technology being used to support those skills. So we're upon further, um, further research, we found that our teachers, first of all, weren't aware of the tools available to them. So that was a problem. We also found that our teachers needed assistance using the tools. They didn't quite know how to use them um, and, and how to use them appropriately. We also found out that, um, and, and, and we, it was reaffirmed, we knew these things, but it was reaffirmed in our, in our research. Teachers needed coaching on analyzing and evaluating technology tools for seamless integration. So again, they knew how to use it to tell them to look up information, but again, when it came to supporting that critical thinking, problem solving, and collaboration, that's so, so important. Our teachers weren't using technology, and they needed, they needed help on how do they leverage it to be able to provide those types of learning experiences for our students. And we also found that our teachers were just flat out overwhelmed and frustrated with the lack of training and support um, in our district. We have, again, um, over 6,000 teachers and uh, we have five instructional technology specialists, and these are those who provide that coaching and that support and training. So um, that was definitely a problem for us. So next slide. <laughs> Okay, so one of the things that we had to do quickly is we needed to come up with a, a strategy to address this. So we developed our own professional learning community. We didn't just want um, what we call a sit and get type of experience. You come in, you take a course for you know three hours, you leave, and that's it, and we never see you again. Um, that 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 is not effective. We did want a bunch um, of experiences where we brought in teachers and train them to go back and train everyone else. We call it train the trainer. We didn't want to rely on that because depending on who you set for training determines the quality 
of what you get for your entire staff. So if you've got a trainer that did not understand um, really what was going on in the train, the trainer, then that means your entire staff didn't understand what was going on. So that, that was a problem. So we had to address that. But bottom line, we really wanted to focus on engaging in relevant uses of technology. So we wanted to narrow the focus and make it very simple for our teachers because they were just overwhelmed with everything that was being thrown at them. So the first thing we did was we said, okay, everybody stop and relax. Let's look at this and in, in address in the bite-sized chunks. So the first thing we, um, one of the things we did is we approached all of our training by addressing three questions or three areas. So the first one is, okay, so what is this? So we really had to start there with the majority of our staff. And then is where we promote awareness of the tools that we had. Remember I said many of um, our teachers didn't know what tools we had available to them and out of all the stuff that we had. So this is where we encourage basic application and integration. So once we move from there, and that's what we've worked on this past year, we called it our awareness series. And um, we actually um, had a training series that I'll talk about in a second where we discuss that. What is this? So then we move to, okay, wow, I can use this too. And this is what teachers are able to connect those dots and say, okay, I can now use this in my class to teach my students to, you know, to solve this problem or help them with their collaboration skills so they can work together. So this is where we facilitated the integration of technology. And that's where we are right now. We're working with teachers to strengthen our digital curriculum support. Um, so to make sure that all those pieces are working together. And then our third, um, our third area was I've got to show my colleagues. So what this means is once you know what it is, once you know how to use it, we needed some ambassadors or teachers that could go out and say, okay, let me pull everyone else in and show them how to use it as well. So this is where we created a culture of collaboration and innovation. So that's what we're trying to work on as well. So this is, um, in a nutshell, our professional learning community called Ignite You. One of the things about Ignite You that I did want to mention before I move on to the next slide is that um, all the entire um, program, the entire experience is based on Bloom's Taxonomy. We wanted to root it in, in research. Um, one of the things that that I've seen in my 23 years in this field in educational technology, um, one of the things that I've seen is that we um, are quick to try to get our teachers to integrate technology. And that's where you're analyzing, evaluating, and creating, you know, these great learning experiences. But my question has always been, how do you do that well, you don't even know what it is and how to basically use it. So we were completely skipping over that piece and jumping straight to integration. And, um, you know, I've seen teachers just fail miserably because they're frustrated because they don't have the, the foundation um, of technology skills. So as a district, one of the things that's really important, and I was kind of translating some of what um, you all were saying in your presentations, I thought was very interesting. But one of the things that I think I um, saw um, was where you were talking about support from the administration or, or your academic authority in your organizations and how critical and important this is. So the first thing that we had to do is pull together for our district, what does this look like? You know, forget about the three areas and the awareness and the integration and the expansion and all of that. The, the reality is what gets monitor gets done. Let's just really get down to it because we had some teachers who were definitely uh, resistant. Um, if you look at the adoption curve, you know they exist and our low adopters. So we came up with our technology proficiency model for our school district um, for Ignite U. And we started with basic. So, and we attached SMART goals to these. And this was presented to our Board of Education as well as our superintendent. So they are the, that's the body that basically is responsible for our school district. And then we, um, we also took it to the level that reports directly to the superintendent, which includes my supervisor, who's our chief information officer, as well as his peers. And so now you have your regional superintendents who are responsible for all of our school principals and the school principals, of course, run the schools. So we started at the top to ensure that our district-level administration, um, they were all on board with this. And, and this expectation was made um, clear to our staff from the very beginning. So we set three goals. 
So this past year, we wanted 80% of our teachers to have that awareness of technology, which is our technology awareness series. And you can see the different areas that we addressed this year with our teachers to make sure they knew what we had. So for the next two years, we'll be working with our integration. And this is, how do you use these tools? How do you use these tools to, to support a learning environment for students that, that promotes collaboration, that promotes um, promotes um, critical thinking and problem solving and all of those um, innovation, all of those things, again, that we're all trying to get out of our students and prepare them with as we push them into the world. And then, of course, we have an advanced area, and this is where um, we have what we call a FUSE cohort. And FUSE stands for Furthering Student um, and now that I'm trying to read it to you, I'm forgetting, and we came up with it. Furthering student engagement, excuse me. And so this is what FUSE stands for for our district. But these are teacher leaders that are able to, again, exp you know, create that, that, generate that, that excitement for our, um, for our students and for our teachers as we move forward. Because this is a hard lift for the district. Uh, we have a lot of teachers to deal with. So moving on to the next slide. Um, Next slide. <laughs> Our critical elements for Ignite You was we wanted to make sure that we provide an equal opportunity and access to technology tools and learning for all of our teachers. That had to happen. These are things that had to happen in order for this to be successful. We had to personalize learning for our teachers just as we expect to personalize learning for our students. We had to also have systemic accountability, which means is that our administration had to basically say, you must do this. This is going to be part of your evaluation, and how well you do this you know, will determine your future with our district. And an expectation of success. So these were three critical elements within Ignite You that we had to make clear to our entire staff and our entire community, not just the teachers, but also um, our uh, community as well, parents um, and, and the community abroad. Okay. So our, our second essential question was, now how are we going to do this? How do we train 7,100 teachers and administrators? Um, we need to make sure that they all receive the same high quality course content and instruction, and we need to make sure we provide opportunities for a job embedded in relevant learning experiences, because we know that research says and practice says that if it's not job embedded, if it's not relevant, they will not cling to it, they, it, it will just, it'll get left right there. So once the training is over, the teachers leave the, what they've learned behind. So this, this was something that we were well aware of, and we knew we needed to make sure that it was relevant to our teachers so that they would move on with it and continue on with those technology skills. So next slide, please. We decided that um, one of the most important things that we could do would be to teach teachers in the way that we were expecting for them to teach our students. So with that being the case, um, we, um, had to, we knew we had to secure a learning management system, a district-wide learning management system. Every, all of our teachers were using different types of learning management system tools. Um, Edmodo, we were using Schoology, some teachers had the free Blackboard tool that they were using. Um, we were all over the map. Um, some teachers were trying to use Google Classroom, um, et cetera. Some teachers made up their own with Moodle. But um, the problem was everyone wasn't on the same page and everyone didn't have the same um, experience. So what we did as a district, we said that we wanted to purchase a learning management system and we wanted to partner with a, a company that would help us with this journey. So after a lot of um, work and a, a lot of evaluation from a technical perspective as well as an instructional perspective, we landed on this learning and um, determined that that was the best solution for our school district. So with that being the case, we worked with um, its learning and we branded it in our district Verge. So in our district, even though it's, it's learning and that's why you see Verge, we call it Verge. So basically what we did for our training was we placed all of our courses inside of its learning. As, as many courses that they would take online, and many online courses. And they could take these courses, and they could completely online, and complete the courses completely online if that's what they chose to do. But we knew we had a huge um, number of teachers who were not probably as comfortable with that. They, they have, they're not used to learning in that manner. So we knew we had to provide supports 
for those teachers. So although they still had to complete the courses online within this learning, we also provided face-to-face -face supporting courses and activities for them. So, you know, this is where we offer more assistance with an actual person holding their hand, talking them off the ledge so that they could learn what they needed to learn. We um, offered extended virtual collaboration. So we would have webinars such as this one, discussions. We would host podcasts. Um, and all of this was used to either remediate for those who really were tr struggling or we had our teachers who were speedboats and ready to just go. You know, they, they got it, they want to learn more, so we wanted to extend learning for them. And then we had um, our on-demand resources and tutoring, and this is just more how-to guides that we would create and um, so that teachers could use and, and refer to and get ideas, as well as, you know, I, I need to know how to insert this picture really quick, I forgot how to do that. Something as simple as that in terms of using the, 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 um, the tools, ranging from there to, okay, now I have, we're going to be teaching, um, you know, cause and effect. And I want to use, you know, a particular graphical organizer to assist with that. What can I do? And so we would have something for them to be able to um, show them how they could be able to use the, our tools to determine how to support that particular learning skill. So the last slide. Yes. <laughs> the very last slide. We're getting um, there. We are getting there. This is this is the end of um, all that I have to to add. But the last thing we did once we put everything inside of our um, learning management system, and we made these courses available, and we also provided many many supports to our staff. Um, we also um, developed our Fuse EdTech ambassadors. So these are those teachers. Uh, remember, I talked about earlier in the presentation, and Fuse stands for Furthering Student Engagement because that's what these teachers um, are, are tasked with doing. And these are our teacher leaders in technology integration. These are the teachers that really understand, that really know exactly what you know needs to happen, and they also know their colleagues, which is key. So you have a peer working with you. Um, we needed them to have the attitude, you know, I want to share, I really want you to get this, you know, cheering them on, you can do it, this is how you can do it, but we also wanted them to have the attitude, so we needed them to understand it, because we didn't want them to be told wrong, <laughs> the other teachers, so we looked for those two um, elements. We also looked for them to be coaches and mentors for our teachers, to help them with those ideas, and um, to help with that, we Im implemented what we call our Dare to Share Challenge. So one of the problems we found in our district is that um, many teachers have great ideas, but they weren't sharing them. They were kind of keeping them to themselves. And so we have a challenge in our district going on right now, and it's called Dare to Share. So you have it, you understand it, but we dare you to share it with somebody else and help someone else learn it as well. So it's kind of working well. Um, they're letting go <laughs> of these great ideas that they have and sharing them with their colleagues. So that's really important. But also for our fuses, um, we're um, not only are they facilitating these dare, this Dare to Share Challenge, but they're also, we're trying to make sure that they have district recognition. We know as a school district, as time moves on, we're going to have to provide support for our teachers and um, and for our schools, more formal support. So that could come in the form of a position allocated specifically for that, or it, you know, or in many different ways it could occur. But we wanted to make sure that as a district we knew who these people were. So when they're hiring for um, these technology integration coaching positions, they knew exactly who had the skills up front. So that's pretty much our professional learning and how we're addressing it. We are in no way perfect. Um, I will say that working with a learning management system has been critical, and um, I guess I'll toss it over to Rachel at this point or whomever. Thank you for the opportunity to share.